Hello everyone, welcome back to another election prediction video. This time we have Vice President Kamala Harris up against Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. So again, Harris typically underperforms Biden in most polls by 3% or so. Just in the uh, general election polling, the favorability number, she's always behind it by around 3 or 2 points. But uh, So she would definitely struggle with in the swing states with those independent voters. I think that's what's the difference between her and Biden is those independents just dislike her more than Biden. But uh, we're going to get right into this prediction with the safe states. So Colorado, of course, it's just trending more and more Democratic every election. I think she would be able to fairly easily win the state of Colorado against Ron DeSantis, considering how right-wing he has become on the issues. Alaska, would it go to solid Republican? Honestly, it's tough to say, but I think it would just barely go over that 10-point margin just because I don't think Harris would have the best appeal to these rural states and rural areas like uh, Joe Biden does. He has a slightly better appeal to those rural areas than she does. In Iowa and Ohio, however, I do think DeSantis underperforms Trump just enough to keep these into the likely column. I think he underperforms Trump by two points each in both these states, only winning it by eight points each, which uh, from the last prediction, these were safe states. In Florida, it's his home state. He'll definitely have a super large advantage here. He'll probably win the state by 12 points against Harris. Again, Florida's just trending more and more Republicans, sort of a lost cause for Democrats at this point. They really should invest in other states at this point. Plus, with independent voters disliking Harris more than they uh, dislike Biden, that'll definitely hurt her in this state. Same thing could be said for Texas. I think DeSantis probably wins Texas by six points or so against Harris. I don't think she'd do fairly well here. New Mexico and Virginia stay as likely Democratic states, again, because of how right-wing DeSantis is. They'll still come out and vote for her. They're traditionally Democratic anyway. In Nebraska second, I think it remains a lean Harris state. I think she, or lean Harris district, I should say. I think she wins it by three points or so against DeSantis. I don't really think it's a shot here, considering how right-wing has become on the issues. In Maine at large, I think this probably stays as a likely Democratic state. And even New Hampshire stays as likely Democratic. Just because DeSantis is going full-on right-wing to try to win the primary. He's trying to out, outflank Trump on the right-wing side of most of these political issues here. Which is definitely going to hurt him in New Hampshire. Because it's a socially liberal state at this point. It's no longer a swing state. It's starting to lean Democratic heavily. Uh, Maine second probably still goes to Santis by a likely margin. Again, Harris had underperform the rural areas. But uh, in Minnesota, she'd still do well in the urban areas here to keep it a likely victory. Probably wins it by six points or so against DeSantis. And she also wins in Michigan. Again, she'd get very high black turnout into the Detroit area. She'd probably easily win Michigan against DeSantis at this point. Just based on how DeSantis isn't as populous as Trump is on the issues, I think she would narrowly edge out DeSantis here. Uh, North Carolina, again, this is one of the states where DeSantis would probably do a tiny bit better than Trump in, or maybe just break about the same, but uh, I think tiny bit better for now. I think Harris would still get pretty good black turnout in the state of North Carolina, but she wouldn't do as well with independent voters as Biden would, and that would be the real difference here. In Georgia, I think it still would be a tilt margin considering how DeSantis has gone super far right wing on the issues. We've seen that with Herschel Walker. He went pretty heavily right-wing on the issues, and that kind of hurt him, even with his Kennedy, candidate quality differences aside in his personal life. That definitely hurt him. But I think his super, like, him going very right-wing on the issues, more than Kemp did, totally hurt Herschel Walker in the 2022 Senate race in Georgia. So I kind of see, like, the same thing kind of happening here. But would it, would he outperform Trump by a lot, though? I think he would outperform Trump. I had Trump beating Harris here by 0.5. I think DeSantis probably would do a tiny bit better here by like 0.5% again. So it would just be a narrowly 1% margin. So he barely outperforms Trump here just because of those anti-Trump Republicans that just hate Trump's guts just because of his messaging on the issues. But again, with DeSantis being so right-wing, I think it keeps Georgia's lean for now. Okay, 
let's see the next few states here. Arizona and Nevada. Well, with Arizona, again, it's a super narrow state here. There's a lot of anti-Trump Republicans that despise him, but agree with them on their policies. So that's kind of why I see DeSantis edging out Harris in Arizona. But I see Nevada actually being different because of that abortion law that uh, Ron DeSantis signed in Florida. I think that'll definitely hurt him in a very pro-choice state, pro-choice state like Nevada here. So. I think independence narrowly skewed towards Harris here. So we're seeing Nevada be more democratic than Arizona in this uh, election prediction so far. But uh, the last few states, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. This is where DeSantis not being as populist as Trump will definitely hurt him. I think a lot of these voters would not want DeSantis to probably be the president in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, those more populist types. But again, it's Harris. She's pretty unpopular with populist type voters here, but she probably would be a bit better in economics in a lot of these populist voters' eyes here. So that's why I see a state like Pennsylvania narrowly actually voting against DeSantis here just because he isn't as populist as Trump and they would just rather a Democrat in office than DeSantis. But she would struggle in the rural areas here, but she would still get pretty decent urban turnout in Philadelphia here. Especially get pretty good turnout with the African-American voters as well. But we're down to the state of Wisconsin, and that's like the swing state here. That makes or breaks it for either side in this election prediction. So with Wisconsin, it's kind of hard to decide here. I could see DeSantis doing a bit better with rural voters in this state, but he'll fall short with a lot of populist type of voters. It just really depends on which way independents break here. They do heavily just like Harris, but they also heavily dislike DeSantis because we're seeing the more people know about DeSantis as his name recognition goes up, he gets more unpopular. So again, it's really about who's less unpopular in the state of Wisconsin. But uh, I think DeSantis would narrowly, narrowly pull it off against Harris by like the closest margin possible. I mean, if Harris gets better turn in Milwaukee, region of Wisconsin, very high turnout there, then she could totally win the state. But for now, I think DeSantis narrowly edges out Harris here, narrowly beating her. And this used to not be the case like months ago. It used to be that DeSantis easily beat Harris. Now he's struggling to beat her. And that just shows how much his campaign is sort of collapsing. But uh, at the end of this, I'd greatly appreciate if you were to subscribe and let me know what you think of this map in the comments below. Which one, which states do you disagree with? Do you agree with DeSantis beating Harris or you think Harris would beat DeSantis? Let me know what you think of that. I'll see y'all later.